All right. Oh, I'm getting an echo. Hopefully, okay, that, that, that went away. We are live and uh, currently no viewers, so that worked out nicely. Perfect. I didn't know. I figured 4 o'clock in the air. Oh, we got one. All right, cool, cool, cool. So uh, who, whoever our one viewer is, if you want to leave something in the chat, go for it. <laughs> but uh, we are here uh, to do a live stream. This is going to be kind of a – so Tyson and I want to try to do yeah, at least one live stream a month, if not two. Oh, there he is. Rick is there. Hey, Rick. Let me let me throw him up on the howdy, Rick. Rick says hola. Hey, Rick. Good to see you, buddy. And uh, yeah, so we are going to be discussing UFOs, aliens, and butt probing. Oh my! Mainly butt probing. I mean, we do have Chris Siever on with us, <laughs> so I figured, you know, come on, <laughs> stay. <laughs> uh, so. Chris, you were on with us a couple of times. And of course, I'm sure at some point here, we'll bring up Wellsville Knights and everything else. Uh, but when you were on discussing those projects, you alluded to an interest in the the weird and the alien UFO. Are, are you a purist? Do you go UFO or do you call them UAPs now? So is it, uh, they're I'll UFOs. Say? Thank you. They're okay. UFOs. I hate that UAP thing. It sounds too meh. It's like they're trying to mock. It's what for the a modern audience. What, what's UAP? I don't, I don't even know. know. I don't know. I know what a UFO is. So uh, you alluded to the fact that you were interested in that subject. Uh, I, too, am interested. Um, I'd be interested to also see. I know Tyson is as well. Uh, what your. Uh, what if there's a paycheck in it, I'll believe any <laughs> damn thing you want. <laughs> Thank you, Winston. Um, so. <laughs> so, Chris. Years, I, yeah. So uh, tell me and the audience, the, the, the two wonderful people listening, including Rick. <laughs> what. Yeah your interest is in ufos how far back does it go how deep is it do you also should you have also worn the tinfoil hat like my compatriot here um yeah i mean i've believed since i was a little kid you know yeah um i was definitely the kid who always looked up in the sky you know mm -hmm. i was the kid who we had a um where my bedroom was i could walk right out on the onto the porch onto the back porch the top of the back porch and i would just i would get a pillow and i would look up there and i'd look up in the sky and hoping to see something oh yeah but and i had two things that happened okay well hold, uh, hold the hold those that's a good tease I will. Well, I will. yeah because uh, I, I was curious to see if you'd had an experience and i i have like an adjacent experience and i, I don't know i've never asked tyson actually if he's ever had any any uh weirdness related to ufos because being that you were in the military and in, in a desert for a long time. And I know that oftentimes things have been connected to that. So for all um, I know, I was straight up fucking experimented on and <laughs> they just wiped my brain and I don't, it's possible. It. it is definitely possible so, that, that happened. Uh, uh, but so, yeah, I'm anxious to swap, swap real life stories with you guys too. To see what's, yeah, yeah, cool. What's what? Well, I can, okay. So I can relate to that, Chris, cause I too, and I, I, I'm curious to know what your, like what, where it came from for you. My dad was really big and he was, had been in the air force and he was always, it's interesting. My dad was like a geologist and very science minded when it came to UFOs and stuff like that, though, he was all in, man, he was all in. And he, uh, now he, you know, he had all these different theories as to what it could be and, and whatnot. And we, I'm sure can get into that as well. But I always remember as a kid, I, I remember getting a book, uh, called majestic, that was all about like the whole Ros all the Roswell stuff and everything. And I'd walk around reading it and, you know, looking really, you know, weird at 11 years old reading that stuff. And then there was like a window for me where I get, I kind of feel like I got agnostic on the whole thing. I never went full like atheist on UFOs, but I got agnostic, you know? And then, and, and again, obviously we should mention growing up on X files and all that. I'm sure contribute was a contributing factor to my interest. Uh, but then probably within the last and it was before the current explosion of all the stuff that's been happening yeah, yeah. i started to find myself it was weird i remember having a moment where i thought i kind of want to believe in this again even if there's even if it turned out it's all bullshit i want to believe in this again just because i remember how much fun it was to speculate and talk about and think about and and i did the same thing i used to stare up at the sky um, and just want to see something. And, and there was a couple of times I was convinced I did, but looking back at it, I think that may have just been wishful thinking. <laughs> it was just, yeah, it's probably just a satellite or something passing by. Um, but that being said, um, yeah. So, so Tyson, how, how long have you had an interest and to what degree? Cause obviously your, 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 uh, 
hat wear is uh, implying a certain level of uh, snarkiness. <laughs> yeah, it's a, I'm a total poser, though. I'm not. I, I wouldn't say I'm all. So, so here's the thing. Uh, uh, to to quote the great Fox Mulder, um, I want to believe, but I I haven't really had like a holy shit experience where I can't explain it away. I'm also like super naive because I've done that with ghosts too, where I've seen shit and shit's happened and I just immediately explain it away. Not that I'm like this anti-believer. I just, and then like weeks will go by and I'll start thinking about shit. I'll be like, you know what? That really doesn't make sense. Maybe what I saw was not what I actually thought I saw. Uh, but I, as far as UFOs and alien encounters and stuff go, I've never had a, like a really pressing um, incident. I've seen things that kind of made me, you know, uh, uh, look a little bit. I'll say the scary, and again, this can totally be explained, but the scariest thing I've ever experienced was a year, maybe two years ago, I took the dog out to pee out here in the front yard, and it's the first time that I saw uh, the Starlink satellites. Now, Joe, I don't know if you've seen Starlinks down here, and, and Chris, I assume in New York you you can see them too, depending on where oh, they're, yeah. they're at. Yep. Um, but my first reaction was not alien invasion. It was Red Dawn. I assumed that it was the commies because it looked like helicopter lights at first. I'm like, what the fuck are all these choppers doing flying in formation? And then it was like too perfect and they were too far away. And then they were speeding up. Yeah. And, and and for folks that are watching this now or are going to watch this later, if you've never seen a Starlink satellite train at, at night where it just so happens where they're orbiting, where you can see it in the sky, it is a trippy thing to see like you're pretty cool believe me your first reaction is not oh it's elon musk your first reaction is like holy shit we're getting it, it, it is your your first reaction is it's, it's an elite uh cuban incursion force <laughs> <laughs> well my first reaction but eventually you do i'm not gonna lie eventually i'm like it, it, i was a lot more comfortable if i had to fight like commies than aliens yeah well I'm that's just, fair I'm just saying but real, real there was quick. a part of it that's like okay well this is it this is my alien this is my alien uh encounter but other than that i can't say that i really experienced anything that was like a for sure there's no explanation and i think i just had an uh, an encounter with a a non-terrestrial intelligence yeah. of some yeah. sort all right so real quick before we continue uh bob tate says siever <laughs> so obviously that was bob tate. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you bob for the comment appreciate that uh all right so so then so i feel like Fair, fair to say this, um, definite, but the bottom here, definite, uh, believer, this guy, lifelong believer who went agnostic for a little bit, but is, uh, starting to take communion again. Ah, see what I did there. And then, uh, wait, Tyson, wait, there he is. Tyson is sort of that, uh, wants to believe he's not a full scully. No, I'm a hundred percent confident. The, the, okay. the, I mean, I'm that guy that says the universe is too damn big to think that there's sure. not something out there. I just, yeah. it, it, I'm pissed that I, it hasn't happened to me yet. Yeah. Except that so, makes sense. So what's funny is I totally came into this thinking we would be talking about, and I'm sure we'll talk about some various movies as they relate to this topic, but the more we do this, <laughs> the less I really care. We do. We just talk about whatever. Uh, <laughs> so, um, Okay, well, actually, okay, I'll bring up a movie. So we did, I recently watched, and I hadn't seen it since it came out, Fire in the Sky, if you guys remember that one. Did you ever see that, Chris? Yeah, I saw it in the theater. Oh, boy, here we go. So my memory of that movie was, and it's so funny because my middle son, I'd shown them the trailer first, and it had been 30 years or whatever, you know, since I'd seen it. And I showed him the trailer, and then we watched the movie, and his reaction was exactly what mine was in 1993, which is, I didn't hate it, but it was so the trailer was so deceptive oh, as yeah. to what the movie was. <laughs> he was pissed. He was like, "Man, what? I thought it was good. It's like five minutes of what's in the trailer." I was like, "Yeah, I remember that now." So yeah, yeah. rewatching it, I liked it better than I remembered liking it. But then I started like researching all the stuff around it and everything, and I was like, "Okay, well, we'll see." Uh, but so, what what is your take on like something like Fire in the Sky and that kind of? Um. I found the real stuff to be far more compelling than the movie. Yeah. Uh, it was kind of the same thing. I mean, I walked out of that theater just kind of like bummed. You know? yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, you know, that was cool. The ending. <laughs> yeah. Well, which is cool. funny because Rick says that ending in the ship is terrifying. And yes, it, it is. a That's the best part of the movie, if we're being honest. Yeah. 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 But I, I think I found the, the, 
you know, Travis's story far more compelling mm-hmm. than what Hollywood did to yeah. it. Um, so I haven't, honestly, I haven't really thought much of it. And I, I, I've seen it that once. Yeah. You know, and felt like I never needed to see it again. Yeah. It, it's know? only cool to me because some of the actors that are in it, you know, it's relatively somewhat early in their careers, you know, and there's a lot of people in it, like a shockingly large number of people. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it, it definitely, it, it's it's very that especially that trailer is so deceptive. <laughs> it's not yeah. the movie. Well, they gotta get you in the seat. Oh, I get it. I get what <laughs> I get it. But man, whoo, it is really deceptive. Yeah, myself, my, although I will say the effects held up really well because it's all practical and they they looked really, and the the aliens look cool and the 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 effects of the zero G's of him floating around the ship and all still looked really really good. It didn't yeah. have didn't jump out as being you know too much early 90s cgi or you right. know that kind of thing so um did you rewatch it or have you watched it recently tyson or did you not get a chance to uh no that's i know we uh, spoiler alert i think that's one of the reviews that we we do coming out next month or something but no it's been a it's been a minute since i seen it. and to chris's point i think when it comes to um, i mean short of ridley scott alien universe when it comes to alien movies and bigfoot and even paranormal movies, I find like the TV shows, especially reenactment reality shows that are done really well with good actors. I find those a lot scarier than big Hollywood type film representations of, of the paranormal stuff. Yeah. I mean, I do. So, I, I do I'm, have I, a, a small list here of, of movies that I, okay. I really do love. Okay. In, in that genre. That'd be a good kickoff point. So and uh, a few of them that I, I, have put myself into and like sort of what, what I do in that situation, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's a lot that I, I like for very different reasons. I like just because of the cheese of it or the fun of it or, mm-hmm. you know, things like that. But these are particular movies that I feel like really like hit me in a way where, okay, this, this is how things feasibly could go, <laughs> you know, if these things happen. You know, so. All right. Well, what hit hit us with your uh, your your top list, the ones that do it for you? Well, I mean, my my favorite Spielberg film is Close Encounters. Like, great it, movie, hands down. It is my favorite of his films, and it's a movie that, um, I think that and like Arrival are probably like the closest things to what could actually go down. Um, It helps that both films were sort of, you know, had a lot of uh, people in the field behind them. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, very reputable people in, in the science community, intelligence community, all of that stuff. The UFO UFO community um, helped guide and shape those films. Uh, And so those, but Close Encounters in particular is uh, is a movie that um, I <laughs> feel very strongly about. Mm-hmm. Uh, lots of people don't like Richard Dreyfuss's character, but I got to say, if I was in that situation, I would do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, too, would walk away. I would 100% get on that ship. <laughs> um, but that's me. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, but the the feeling of those of those particular movies and arrival uh is is um something that i feel could technically be real life situations and how we would deal with it in real life you know and then you go on the other side of the spectrum which is independence day which uh i love just for the sheer stupidity and buffoonery of it but what we would do in that situation, you know, if these ships came, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. how society would handle it. This was a far more like action packed blockbuster science fiction type mm-hmm. approach to it. Uh, you know, I mean, we would be destroyed. We would sure we would be destroyed. There's no like, oh, yeah, there's no Bill Pullman <laughs> doing his that speech. Spe- uh, that speech is pretty motivating, though. I know. But come on. You know, this, kick the this, kick this, the tires, light the fires, Big Daddy. That's all you got to do, and then you're, <laughs> um, uh, you know, and then yeah, you know, you know, early on, like I love, 
in the same vein of Independence Day, which kind of aped a lot of this, but V. Oh, uh, v. I got love that as a kid. V. Uh, it was a huge deal in our yes, household. Yes, it was. Um, and, you know. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. But as a six year old watching V, um, you know, there's a part of you that sort of says, wow, this is this is how the news would cover it. This is how we in, in the family would sort of deal with it. These sh- giant ships show up, not the aliens, the lizard people and all that. And the everything. lizard baby, the lizard yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, uh, and then there's uh, the Prometheus side of things mm-hmm. for me. I love the movie Prometheus. Um, and one of the things that I take away from that film is the idea of uh, what if we were put here? You know, what mm-hmm. if we are from another creature? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, that is fascinating to me and exciting to me. Uh, and I lean way towards more towards that type of thing. And evolution and all of that stuff than i do (laughs) i am not a religious person at all uh i don't i am 100 percent. i am whatever you could call be below an atheist i am below that (laughs) like i have no belief at all in some sky wizard and and his judgmental rules and all that silly stuff that that the bible all that stuff is not something that i swim in I, uh, that's that is science fiction to me um but so the ideas of prometheus taking it away from you know the alien franchise and and all of that um the ideas that were planted in in prometheus i like a lot um but i think the closest thing is close encounters that's that to me is a uh this is this is the way it's gonna go as mm-hmm. far as I'm concerned, you know, yeah. if it if it finally goes down, uh, yeah. and I have thoughts on that as well. Uh, okay, of, okay. Of, of well, well, before down. before you get before you get to them, real quick, we had a couple comments. So Bob says, "Close Encounters of the Inbred Redneck Kind is better than Fire in the Sky." Uh, <laughs> I would not agree, Bob. <laughs> right, it teaches up, uh, and then uh, Rick says, "Communion has some great moments, and the walk in." One of my favorite Philip Mora flicks, to which Bob follows up with Community is great. Peak Nutty Walkin. Joel, we talked about this. I have never seen Communion, but I did read the book. And yeah, and I have the book. Uh, the I find the book to be better. Than the movie. <laughs> yeah, well. Uh, and then Bob says, I rewatched the V saga a few weeks ago. Love it. There you I, go. I have watched V uh, since I was a kid. I have it. Wa- I have it. When it came out, I remember I was in second grade. And I remember uh, Halloween, I was at a Lutheran uh, private school for like a few years in my elementary school years. And then I got dumped into public school and, you know, explains a lot. Uh, and so and so I remember my buddy Ian dressed his like mom made him the full red. It was I was so jealous. I, I don't even remember what my costume is. I remember Ian's costume because it that was so amazing. freaking badass. Um, and uh, let's see here. We got uh, Rick says, oh, he met Irons. That's right. Because I saw that he had talked about that he wrote about that actually uh for his film fury or uh, column hey i met uh ironside is a michael ironside for the yep. few that wouldn't know that at a show back in november dude rocks yeah i've always heard that michael ironside's a really cool guy uh, bob says he's a great actor i agree bob let's see bob that says uh oh wait hold on you're wrong sir don't think you could diss the movie just because you directed it <laughs> oh i i can <laughs> oh <laughs> uh, i know that was a fart in the wind that we had zero interest in doing uh, um, and it shows <laughs> v is awesome except the baby it's alive was more convincing and i love it's alive so it was very com- it's yeah, alive was watched, very convincing uh rick buddy of mine bobby heckman um is also like a huge v lover and he also watches it every single year uh we watch the mini series and we watch the, the i need to rewatch it series the yeah. final battle yeah uh the show not so much i do own the show the show was you know, uh, a little bit uh, yeah, yeah. of its time, but um, the two miniseries are still like very relevant. Now, when you say the show, are you referring to the one that came out? And I say more recently, it was still like what 
It was right after Lost, right? Because it was no. Another... I'm talking about so they did a series. They yeah, I knew the up. series of the original. I thought I'm talking about. Do you remember that that thing they tried to do after Lost with the uh, the lady who played? I can't remember the actress's name. 2009. Before. Yeah, yeah, around that. I, yeah. I didn't like that. I didn't like that. I I made it like two episodes in. I was done. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so to touch on a couple of things you said, I agree with you about Close Encounters. It's not my favorite Spielberg. That's Raiders. Always will be Raiders. Raiders forever and ever for me personally. But Close Encounters is a it's top tier Spielberg in my mind. Um, every year I not every year every time I rewatch it, and then I watched it a, for, for a couple of years ago was the last time I watched it, and I like that as I've gotten older, I feel like I experience it differently than I did when yeah. I saw it as a kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I agree. Because I funny, like, like it's interesting how you say you could do that. I feel like I couldn't. I think I could. There was a point where I thought I could have, but I don't think I would. I definitely wouldn't now. I mean, you could hey, what, walk, get, leave at no, the end. No, I, not because, because what I could, for no, me, it depends I, on how many other people life. are going on the damn shit. And, and honestly, you know how I am about people. Like, Oh, that's true. You, yeah, you're like, if you could be by yourself, then yeah. you'd probably be fine with it. If like I a mean, fucking crowd starts walking on, I'm going to be like, well, if, I guess if, I'm going to ch- that's why I'm moving to Vermont, a, see what northern Vermont looks like. Maybe if I had a guarantee that I knew that I would be dropped off again. Yeah. yeah. I need and, limited capacity on the ship, too. And, like, that you were, to and that you weren't being duped, and once you're on, they turn into the ones like in... Uh, <laughs> fire in the sky because <laughs> to me it sounds it sounds way too close to like a carnival fucking cruise like if i'm gonna be on there and like i have to share the pool with a bunch of people i don't yeah. like and be on their schedule and yeah. you know i have to eat with a bunch of strangers that's not my that's not my jam yeah rick, rick says he couldn't leave his family even for aliens and yes i'm with you rick although i feel like what goes down with dreyfus is in his family that okay if that was the situation that's debatable <laughs> i mean i i love my family yeah. love my family of course you do but uh, for that, you'd be willing to okay. I this is <laughs> Bob, this, Bob says I could. <laughs> this is uh, ah, that's great. Uh, you know, yeah. Uh, okay, this right. is uh, this is something that would be something that that's that's something that is uh, world changing. Yeah. You know? Now it's uh, interesting the Prometheus thing, and I totally get it. From you know, I, I I'm on these. I, I have my own belief system. I, I respect all. I think everybody has a belief system. Even the negation of a belief is a belief. So the the fact is that I think it's. I wouldn't have thought you would have liked Prometheus, and mainly because I assume are you an. I assume you're an alien fan. Oh, huge. Oh, huge. That's what I thought. So I because I I feel very conflicted about those two films. I actually kind of like Covenant to be honest with you. Didn't love it, mm-hmm. but I didn't hate it. Like some people freaking hated those movies. Now the thing I didn't like. Is okay. Well, fair enough. The thing I didn't like from a alien canon perspective was the idea that uh, uh, what's his name, Fassbender, right? That he essentially is the reason why we have the xenomorphs. I hate that. Like we've got to explain where everything comes from. Yeah, crap. that that part of it. I hate that. Like, I don't even think about that shit. Yeah, you pretend uh, like it, it didn't happen. It's so stupid. Yes. Um, and you know if you. I'm also like a big like behind the scenes whore, so I love extras and I love watching all the documentaries. If you watch that documentary, fucking it was it's Damon Lindelof that came in and fucked that movie up because um, it was originally written by John Spates and his and he's on the documentary. He talks about his ideas and the philosophy of the film, and then Lindelof came in and turned it into that. Ah. Um, but a lot of those seeds and a lot of that initial you know uh soup it was john spates and that's the stuff i really enjoy uh like like i could have done without any of the the weird fucking connections to the xenomorphs and all yeah, that the, the neo was it called the neomorph is that and, what they tried to call it <laughs> you know and i understand why they did it um but uh, you know yeah whatever what do you do I I think that it, it and I remember this when Prometheus came out. I know that it got a lot of hate because so many people were excited that we were getting a Ridley Scott alien yes. movie yes. and were pissed that we didn't get alien alien, you know. And and Prometheus is one of those that the more I watch it, the more I enjoy it, the more respect I have for it. And um I enjoy again going back to books and video games and shit like um that the the it, the Weyland Yutani universe is so big, and they the, a couple of these books I'm listening to, newer books, you know, um, they're referencing uh, like um, what was Charlize Theron's Vickers, right? 
Mar- is it Marilyn Vicker? I know it's so- Vickers is her, her life. Anyway, the reference is like her kids generations down get involved with like Wayland Utah. And I think the, the beauty of Prometheus is that it started out as like a truly pure, you know, science and discovery, whatever. And just like so many things, it like by the time you get to, you know, the, the, the late in the timeline, the later alien, you know, aliens and alien three and blah, you know, like you see how twisted and corrupt and how everything fucking comes down to the, the almighty dollar. And I think when you put all that together, that's what makes Prometheus so freaking cool too, is it, you know, you, you see how it was supposed, you know, what, it, what it was yeah. supposed to be and how it started. And... Indeed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, by the way, Rick did want us to know, that Dreyfus's family wasn't that bad. Uh, I'm guessing mainly because Terry Gar was at her peak hotness. <laughs> to which Bob says, "Yes, it was. She was smoking." What? <laughs> what knockers? <laughs> oh yeah, roll, roll, roll and see. Hey. All right. So yeah, because I don't know. I think in Young Frankenstein, which is what four years earlier, that yeah, might be peak. pretty smoking. Young Frankenstein. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so uh, then. Chris says his so his top is uh is what's close encounters? encounters. Joel, what's I'll go last. What's yours? Uh top. you know what's weird. So and look, you know what? You can't pick you can't pick alien or aliens. No, it's I already know. I was gonna more. actually lay that. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna lay that rule down. You beat me to it. Um and I'll ready for I I, I actually think I may I don't know if this is controversial or not. Or I the thing. I thought about this. I okay. Thing. Well, yeah, but I don't feel see, I'm thinking more like UFO right. like theoretically could happen ish kind of movies. Right. That's what and, I was pushing for. Yeah, you know what I mean? As because I mean, uh, as much as I love those other ones, but, uh, but speak of alien and aliens, I had this epiphany, I think it was yesterday. So I go to my kids and I love I love all the alien movies. I don't even give a damn. I I I freaking love them all including 4, okay? Judge me if you will. It's ridiculous. I know it is. I don't care. It 3. I don't care. I don't care. But Aliens I think is my favorite. Sorry, not sorry. Yeah, I, I love Alien. It's a great movie. It's fantastic. But if I got, if you got a gun in my head, so you can take only one of these on that stupid island that apparently they've got electricity and uh, DVD players and VCRs on, you take your five movies. I think I'm picking Aliens over Aliens. I, I mean, I would also pick Aliens. <laughs> there you go. Okay. I just feel like mm-hmm. people get weird about that. They're like, how co- Alien is the superior film? Eh, okay, fine. But Aliens is 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 more fun to me i just yes. love aliens i just love sure. it yeah just saying um so i'm with you I, I close encounters i mean obviously chris nabbed that one but I, not that not that we can't share uh close encounters goes without saying is top tier uh probably my fa- of, of the this this sub genre is absolutely top um i actually i, I remember and i haven't watched it a long time but i remember and let's see i'd be interested to see what reaction we get from from mr sieber signs i i did you like signs? Um, or do you not remember it enough? <laughs> no, no, I remember it. Oh, okay, I remember it. Um, yeah, I mean, I you know, again, I, I kind of like that feeling as well. That feel that that way they made it kind of feel, <sighs> um, my issue with signs <laughs> is the water thing. That's the oh, only, oh, yeah, okay. That's the only thing. Anytime like the the whole alien thing is up against water, that so I, alien. Uh, wait, hold on. So how do you feel about Alien Nation? Because that was also going to be. <laughs> well, I mean, that's more like V. You know, yeah, that's... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, 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 fair enough. Um, but they have the water issue in that too, though. Yeah, the, 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 you know, that, it's salt water though. It's not just silly. tap water. That's silly to me, but um. Yeah, I mean, I I liked signs. I liked how, I guess, how small it was. Um, it's in a way, it's similar. There's a new movie that came out that I really loved called "No One Will Save You." Oh God, dude! Um, I was gonna bring it up. You I knew we were gonna get to it. Oh, eventually. that movie is so great, it and I so loved it. Dude. I mean, I flipped for it. I'm gonna uh, say I'm gonna say I loved it so much. I may or may not have sought out a bootleg. Uh, hmm. Blu-ray that someone made because I Poppy seconds. You darn right, baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, I yeah, that. I mean, uh, that is sort of similar to me. Uh, you know, rural area, mm-hmm. uh, small group of people fighting off uh, this this otherworldly <laughs> entity, yes. whatever. Yeah, um, I like that. 
Uh, and I actually love the ending of No One. I did. Okay, I'm it. not. You get so so. We reviewed that on a show I'm on called Jay the Dead's New Horror Movies. I think I was the. I, I, I'm trying to remember. I, I'm sorry, guys, if you ever hear this. I can't remember if anybody else agreed. I feel like I may have been on an island with that because I I felt like it was open to interpretation. I liked that totally. it, it felt yeah, I like it was upbeat, but yet dark at the same time. I love, I loved, first of all, I thought her performance was like, I, I loved her from, from the days of Justified. I don't know if you ever watched it was Justified, but upbeat yes. for our protagonist. Yes. You know, it was. Yeah. Uh, regardless of the yes. world implications, yes. <laughs> like, yes. Uh, I thought, what a rad ending. I was just yes. like, it's a good and bad ending. You yes. Know? <laughs> yes. It's like, a, uh, the world's fucked, but. Here, what I'm gonna, way to, you know, what, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it up here because uh, uh, this yes, is a good sure this is a good place to be for her. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. Oh, wait, real quick before I I don't want to fall too far behind here. A couple got more comments. So Rick, this is why we get along so well. Rick, Aliens beats it. I think it's referring to Alien, best Cameron film, hands down. Uh, yes, even Titanic for those that are watching. Uh, <laughs> Bob says Sides is a great movie. Rick says he loves it. Uh, the whole the whole water thing was goofy. Still a great flick though. Rick makes a point, but they were invading areas away from large bodies of water. <laughs> true, I guess so. Uh, Bob says, true, but what are you going to do with a plant almost entirely covered in water if it kills you? What were they hunting for? Okay, that is actually a very good point. I just remembered that they played the little girl off of some angelic thing. She drank the water and blessed it. Gives a little credence to the demon theory. Oh, I guess there was. Yeah, that's right. I remember that vaguely, that there was a theory that there was some demon thing. The main thing about science, I want to say, is that I just remember... And this is the thing I thought Shyamalan, those first few movies he made especially, did really well was that kind of, I call it the Spielbergian sense of awe, where that moment when Joaquin Phoenix is in the closet watching the TV, and it's so simple, mm -hmm. and his reaction sells what is ultimately not a big deal, but he sells it to the point where it's terrifying. <laughs> Because yeah, that's well, exactly what you would do. It's yeah, exactly. I mean, it made it made the audience jump. Oh my I god, mean, I remember it. You know, it's so uh, great, it's so <laughs> so great. I love that that fight. So, and I did love that. And I can't remember where I, I saw. I heard someone say this, but I want to give credit where credit is due. It was not my own original idea, but that the whole movie it feels it's basically like War of the Worlds is going literally going on, and there's some hero that they're we're falling around, and these are the this is the story of all the people that are being affected while that main big independence day war of the world's movies going on. That's what, what, that's what signs is. It's the, what the rest of us would be going through in that kind of situation. So uh, yeah, I, just, it's similar to no one will save you. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, to an even yes. higher degree, you've got yes. somebody that's totally alone. That yes. But what I loved about no one will save you too was not just, I mean the, the pace of, I love the fact there was almost no dialogue uh, whatsoever. Yeah. I thought Caitlin Deaver's performance was flipping phenomenal. And yeah. uh, did you did you ever watch uh, Justified? I did not. Okay, but... it's I, I love that show, and I know Tyson's a fan. She that's where I first discovered her as an actress. What's um, so funny is her character on Justified is so opposite. Oh, like, totally. She, her, oh, yeah. Her, like, she's so witty and so sharp, and yeah, such yeah. a smart ass in yes. Justified, yeah. and doesn't say a fucking word in this. And oh yeah, yeah. But but what I just I, I love the I loved range. that her character was very vulnerable, but and tough, but not in that like faux girl bossy way like she's just trying to effing survive she was so relatable you know what i mean i was like my guess what we'd all be doing you just be scrambling and just trying to i mean i doubt i would get i would i would not have gotten nearly as far as she did into the game as it were but my god uh it's so great dude it's such a i want to watch it right now it's such a good movie <laughs> love it yeah fantastic good i'm glad you brought that one up um another one i do want to mention uh, and I don't know. Are you a, are you a found footage guy at all? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I always love when I throw something to Chris and I get. That. I'm gonna bring out some found. I'm gonna bring up some found footage too. If okay. you don't I, mind, do it, Joel. I like. They're among my favorites. Uh, it's it's very. I like Cloverfield. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Okay. Uh, Although I, yeah. I liked 10 Cloverfield Lane better, if I'm being honest. I do like that, too. Yeah. yeah. Um, but as far as, uh, yeah, found footage to me doesn't, um, it doesn't hit. Okay. Because uh, you know. there's really only one. I, I feel like there's been a few that I've really, I like Wreck. I don't know if you ever saw Wreck. I did. The, yeah, I, I liked that one a lot. There's a, there's a there's a handful of found footage films I really did like when I saw them. 
Um, Wreck is probably the only series where I think I've seen any of the sequels. I don't even think Paranormal Activity. I know I saw the first one, didn't I? Don't think I saw the sequels. Blair Witch Two. I know it's not found footage, but I walked out of. It's literally I've only walked out of two movies in my life, but that movie was so effing stupid to me, and I had better things to do, and I was in like that early twenties phase of my life where. Oh, I'm I, I'm not going to even waste my time with this. And it was the moment when they're all in the woods. It's the next morning and they're freaked out and they spent the whole night before high. They're high as a kite. They're drunk off their asses. They wake up next morning freaked out because they can't remember what happened. And that that must have been caused by the Blair Witch, not by <laughs> the fact that they were shit faced. <laughs> And high as a kite the whole night before. I, just, I can't do this. This movie was too stupid for me. So, and that's saying something because, man, do I like some stupid shit. But that aside, um, I, I, emo- I'm, I feel like I am not a, like all in on found footage. I got some friends that lo- I know Tyson, you're a huge fan. Uh, my buddy Dave Z is like, uh, you don't know, put words in my mouth. I know, you're a fan. I know you're I'm a fan. fan. I don't know. I'm a huge fan. Though. Okay. Like... You're a fan. My buddy Dave Z is a huge fan. hundred percent. I know yeah. he is. Right. Um, and, and, and I got, I got a friend, Mike, Michael, I know. I mean, he's the found footage critic, so I know he knows like everything there is to know about found footage. Um, so I've, I've seen the few, there have been a few found footage movies I've seen that I've not been into, but I haven't seen enough. I feel like to say whether I really, really like the genre, or I just like a few of the movies I've seen in the genre, if that makes sense. But one of them, and I don't know if this is going to be on your list, Tyson, so I'm sorry if I'm stealing your thunder. But I the, know exactly what you're going to say. Okay, the McPherson did. tape. Did you ever see the McPherson tape? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I thought, I thought it was effective until the last, like, 10 seconds. Because, mm-hmm. uh, spoiler alert for the McPherson tape, the moment you see what you see walking through the house, and it's so obviously some guy's kids and like costumes, I was like, "Really? Come on, man! Like you could have, uh, you know, you didn't have to show that much." So, being that we've established you're not a found footage fan, Chris, I'm assuming that movie was not your cup of tea. No, no, I thought it was a little goofy. It was goofy, but it was. I, um, I, I just I liked that they really leaned in to the idea of like they're just shooting a birthday and it's very mundane because i think truthfully for you to pull that off effectively to, for it to be found footage like that it wouldn't be that interesting to watch when you think about it you know in real life footage that happened to catch something cool 90 percent of it would not be interesting yeah <laughs> i'm just I, all around i'm just not a found footage guy like, okay i've never you know i find it's just a it just doesn't work for me that's the thing. It just doesn't work. I don't buy into it. Um, I always know that it's just right. actors. I, uh, you know, the plausibility of someone constantly running around with the camera on is silly yes. to me. Yes. Like, it, it, you know, it, so it just doesn't work as a concept for me. Got uh, it. I would rather just watch a motion picture of what's, at, you know, of, yeah. of the story, you know what I mean? <laughs> than yeah. watch that. Yeah. Um, so it just, you know. Like, I remember the Blair Witch. I walked out of that movie like, man, I wanted to throw something at the screen. I was just like, the whole thing, I was just like, this is garbage. So did you, did you not love the, that the zeitgeist that followed where every normie person was obsessed with it because they well, did the whole internet campaign thing? I had a friend, <laughs> my, my buddy, actually like bought the whole thing. He, he thought it was all real, mm-hmm. and I was making fun of him the whole time yeah. <laughs> and you know i mean he fo- obviously he found out he figured it, out that it wasn't yeah, clearly yeah. wasn't real but i just yeah i i so i you know i never bought it well um, i feel like with blair witch i remember because i was in uh i was going to college in orlando when it came out and around around that time i mean i i actually i was done with college at that point but i I was, I, I was like, uh, actually, cause I was waiting. Oh, I think that, take that back. That was 99. Right. Yeah. So actually I was done with college. Mm-hmm. And then, cause actually I, I, I left college before I was technically supposed to be done and ended up going back, uh, later. But by 99, I was working on my first feature of my friend, uh, Terry who wrote it with me. And then I remember what it was. We went up to the Indian and Blair, Witch had not been shown anywhere yet. So it was like one of the first screenings of it. And I knew about it because we had seen the last broadcast actually came out before Blair Witch. And I remember I re- actually kind of liked the last broadcast at the time, but then I saw Blair Witch and I mean, the main thing with Blair Witch was 
is like it, it was shaky cam central. And one of my favorite stories is I took my sister who was pregnant with my niece, who let's put it all in perspective, who's in her mid twenties now. And my sister had to bolt from the theater and puke her guts out. <laughs> she got motion, sick, <laughs> which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, there were people. Yeah, I remember walking. my dad getting sick in the theater. Yeah. I, I do remember that people walking out of our screen. Yeah. Um, so, but I do like also had a lot of booze at the end. There were so many people like, really? Like, stick, like yelling at the screen. My like, dad, oh, my, yeah. yeah, I remember my dad and my, uh, my dad's uh, best friend, Mitch, they came out and I was working at the theater and I remember, or, or I was, I know, you know what? I think I'm like getting my whole, isn't it funny when you get to a certain age, you're like, wait a minute, no, because that's 99. I wasn't working at the theater still, but it was at the theater I worked at because I remember I was there. They came out and I was like, so what'd you guys think? And they were like, that was the stupidest piece of shit <laughs> I have ever. Why did you even recommend? I was like, oh, I thought you find it interesting. I was really wrong. <laughs> oh, well, you know. Sorry, Dad. R.I.P. <laughs> um, real quick here, uh, P uh, before you get going there, Tyson. Uh, Bob says he loves found footage as well. So just like you, Chris. Um, You're my boy, Bob. <laughs> uh, hey, Blair Witch 2 had uh, Tristan Schuyler in it of Kidco fame. Okay. <laughs> you say so. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, 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 I remember seeing it with my first wife. There was an older couple in the lobby talking to the ticket guy about it being a true story. I feel so bad for telling them it wasn't. I ruined it for them. <laughs> uh, see, I got motion sickness for Blair Witch 2 toward the end. We sat way too close because the theater was full. Yeah. Yeah. And then Rick just says, Cloverfield. Yes. Which I liked Cloverfield, but I liked Tim Cloverfield. Blame that one I can stand. Yeah. Cloverfield is probably my favorite. That's what I was going to get. I have two favorite alien subgenres. One is found footage. I like found footage alien movies. The other one, though, is one that I don't think we've touched on any of the examples you guys have, have, have mentioned. And it's not so much the alien invasion concept. It's the idea of bringing something back like Sputnik. Chris, have you seen Joe? I know you're a fan of Sputnik. Did you yeah. see Sputnik from the Russian four or five film, years right? ago, Chris? Was that that was the Russian one? Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was that. That wasn't really found footage, though, right? That was. That was no, 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 no. That's, no okay. I'm saying that's the. Yeah. No, that's a motion picture, but that's the yeah. idea of bringing yeah. no, an I really alien life form. Yeah. Back. I like. Yeah. And I'll tell you the other one that I like, man, for better for worse, was uh uh what the hell was the name of it? um the alien autopsy wife truth or something? No. The astronaut's wife wasn't that Johnny Depp and I I, can't think, I, I don't think I ever saw wife that was. <laughs> But the idea of an, somebody going out and coming back and uh, like doppelganger movies freak me out too. Body snatcher type type subgenre. So the idea of you know somebody coming back that looks and walks and talks just like me, but it's not me or not my spouse. You know what I mean? So yeah. that that fascinates me too. That you know it's not Independence Day where we're getting invaded. It's that we're out there exploring and, and come across something. Yeah. I mean, that goes back to alien, right? Where we go exploring something we probably shouldn't. And that's what starts a whole, a whole chain of events. But um, yeah, yeah. Sputnik, I love. So that would be my recommendation too, Chris. If you haven't seen that, I would say give, give Sputnik a, a chance. As long as you, as long as you don't have an aversion to subtitles, which my wife does, but she humored me. <laughs> Oh, really? Because I don't even remember it. Joe, I don't even remember no, it, it being it, in Russia. I, I'm pretty sure it was. I mean, I, mean, I, I know based on the title, it's about a cosmonaut, but I didn't I, I didn't remember sure it Because it was, it was a Russian film. The version I saw, I'm 99% yeah. sure had subtitles. Um, uh, real yeah. quick, and this is another well, one. Just I just goes to show you. Did you, did you guys, uh, so Rick pointed out life was fun, and uh, Bob said, yeah, I was just about to say life. Did you guys ever see life? It was Ryan Reynolds, right? I'm pretty yeah, sure I saw Ryan. life. Yeah. I remember it oh, was, and uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Yes, it was fine. Like I remember that. Thinking, yeah. I went into it thinking it was not going to be like good at all, but I feel I would always put it like in the bucket of. I, although I like this movie more for probably because when it came out and how when it's kind of got a Sputnik feel to it too, though. Yeah, but I was like I was thinking of like, and I know this is totally different because it's underwater, but Leviathan, like it has that sort of like it's not a uh, 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 an A tier type of movie. Like it's trying to be kind of like on par with an Alien or something, but. It, it didn't, didn't quite get there, you know, like whereas Leviathan was like trying to be like the abyss, but didn't quite get there. Uh, though I like Leviathan, so there we are. Me too. Uh, like, watch your mouth. <laughs> uh, Bob says, uh, yeah, it was the astronaut's wife. Mm -hmm. That's what it, and, and Tony joined us. He says, hey, yo, Gil, man. Good to see you live again. Sup, everyone else. Hey, Tony. Thank you hey, for joining us. Hey, Tony. Oh, I know what this line's from. Where are you going to run? 
Where are you going to hide? Nowhere. Because there's no one like you left. It is from Body Snatchers, the Abel Ferreira film. Did you ever see that from one? From the 90s. Not Chris? my favorite. <laughs> no, you don't, you don't like that one? Yeah, I, I like the 70s. I love I like the 70s one. I love the original, too. And, I, and actually, that's mm -hmm. one of the few books that I went back to, like, after I've seen all of the various versions of it uh, and read the book. And 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 yeah, there was quite a few similarities from the between the book, especially the original film. Uh, but the 93 version, it was 93, right? Not 94. I think it was 93. Um, that's I had that, all you, man. I don't remember the yeah, I that the that poster I had up in my room forever. And but it's funny when I was younger, I remember not loving it. And then we watched it, I think for HMP, a horror movie podcast, we covered that. And I re-watching it, I liked it way more. Like I liked it way more than I remembered liking it the first. I don't know when the last time you saw it, Chris, but uh actually, because my wife wanted to see what the difference was between that and the Donald Sutherland one. And I kept saying, man, you're not going to like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and were, were you so right? we watched it. We watched it last year and she didn't. Like it. And I didn't like it. either. We, we were just like, yeah, this this is a no for us. I think that's and that's why you know, I said that we weren't allowed to talk about the thing being, one of, our, of course, though. But that's where you're I, going. Well, yeah, but only to mention that the idea of aliens among us. Yes. You know what I mean? That is what's terrifying to me, too, is that, you know, the paranoia of you don't know. You can play, yes, yes, exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Because God knows I'm not paranoid about my neighbors enough the way it, the way it yeah. is. Now I got to think about them being pod people. I will say I find the 78 version way creepier. Like it definitely it's uncanny to me. Like there's moments, especially that damn dog is uncanny. <laughs> <laughs> but the yeah. the 93 version and maybe it's just because of what, when it took place when it came out and re-watching it i had like it gave me like the nostalgia feels a little bit maybe but i think the 78 version is the superior actually and i really love the original i like the only one that i've watched that i didn't like at all if memory serves was the one that with nicole Kid kidman and uh uh bond right wasn't bond in it <laughs> craig I think it was. Yeah, it was Daniel good. Craig. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah. I oh, remember, yeah. I, but I was out once, and it's very forgettable. I remember very little about it, yeah. if, if memory serves. Um, let's see. Uh, we got, uh, oh, well, we of course. Oh, <laughs> so Rick says, Deep Star 6 for the win, since I mentioned Leviathan. Not all aliens come from space. Great tagline. What about Lords yeah. of the Deep? When Lords of the Deep is getting no love? Come on, people. Um, Bob says, best of the lot. Both of them. I'm assuming you're not referring to Deep Star Six. I don't know. Um, gotta love Life Force as life well. Force. Again, but I, I, is that, you know, <laughs> these are that might be within arm's reach. Yeah, not, those are not the kind of alien things we were discussing. Yeah, was, I, I could have pulled out a shit ton. That yeah, I loved, we're gonna go down that but, road. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, all right. So, speaking of like the creepy idea of aliens, getting back to the uh, the more real world consequences of, of that topic. Um, what is your so what if we're gonna potentially steel man the argument that it's not aliens let's just go there for a second what else could it be because i've heard the argument that it's our government or some other government right so if you if you if you take a couple things uh as being true we take the word of the people like these pilots and uh, it was a are you Rush. are you specifically talking about unidentified flying objects in the sky? Yes, you're talking correct. about correct. I'm not aerial... talking about what, what what if anything is manning them. I am not mm -hmm. talking about any of that. I'm saying, and I am of the opinion that the people that have come forward, especially in recent years, going back, and I'm sure Chris, I'm not telling you anything you've not heard of or don't know, but who knows in the audience? Maybe somebody out there doesn't know about this stuff. Um, but the the like the Tic Tac UFO, you know, you uh, Fr David Fravor. All those guys, like those, I find them very. See the credible. guy on the uh, the Nimitz, the battle, the battleship, right off of California. I think it was Fravor and mm -hmm. maybe the Nimitz. That sounds right. Um, and I find them very believable, sober witnesses to to something, right? So even if you're somebody's very skeptical, I, I I know it's easy to chalk it up to oh they imagined it. It was a mylar balloon. I feel like these are guys that know what the hell the, a mylar balloon is. <laughs> it was out. Altitude sickness. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. I mean, that's um, the problem. You can always, you can. Yes, I mean, sure. 
I have a feeling there'll be people that, uh, like the effing aliens, could walk directly up in front of the White House with with, with cameras going, and it won't matter. It won't be. They'll they'll have a reason why that's not. You know, it's AI or something. They'll they'll have a reason why it's not real. But that being said, I do believe in like say, okay, let's see what where what else are the options. So I find the it could be human based tech suspect mainly because when I think about all the other crap we get wrong so often that I just don't buy that if the things could do what's been reported that they can do, there's nothing in the, especially if, if we're going back, uh, cause I, some of these, I mean, a lot of the more mo- quote unquote modern reports are from 2004. <laughs> you know, that's, you know, we're, we're talking 20 years ago. This isn't like two years ago. It's 20 years ago. So, and then obviously then there's reports that go back, Way beyond that, 40s, 50s. Then, then if project, you get into Project Blue Book shit. Yes. You know, if you, if you go, then you could go back to like ancient civilizations and things they report on where you're like, huh, that sounds oddly familiar. Uh, and so all I'm saying is that I don't know if I buy the tech thing. Chris, where do you stand on, on that? Uh, zero. Percent. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, uh, and even if it was, even if it's something we were like, if you go down the Bob Lazar road, right, that what we are seeing a lot of it is our stuff, but it's reverse engineered from something else. So I, I believe that there's a lot of muddying the waters Yes. Uh, from the CIA and the intelligence community and the government as a whole. I think they're, uh, I think we absolutely have these crafts. I think we have the bodies uh, and I think we are a part of a, you know, disinformation that we've been doing for fucking years to muddy the waters and make people uh think like they're you know yeah like they're these types of yeah. folks and <laughs> uh, that there's nothing to see here that type yeah. of shit so yeah. but no i do not i i don't there's too much uh evidence to the contrary yes and uh, let's be frank anecdotal evidence experiential evidence is in fact evidence now is it evidence that's easily retestable and you can use the scientific method on it no but how do people explain like cave drawings uh old sure. ancient paintings that have these qualities craft like things yeah. uh yeah. skinny big eyed people in these sure. paintings <laughs> well and you think about it, a, a fiery chariot in the sky is how you uh, would have described it in ancient times and a yeah. fiery chariot in the sky sounds an awful lot like what people report seeing. So um, I, I definitely think I, I'm with you. I, I here's the thing. I think uh, we. I think uh, absolutely there could be a mudding of the waters. I think that's absolutely true. But I also think that if it's something that we have built, we don't have the technology to to explain exactly. the, the 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 sort of anti physics of it all. The yeah. fact that it seems to violate what we know. <clears throat> matter can even do now that that's the key right that the real thing that i think works against us as humans is is our inherent arrogance that we think we've already got the answers and we've got it all figured out we're good we know it all so because of that we it it blinds us to what could be like honestly there's a part of me that wonders like the argument that what if they've been here the whole time and they just have like so, so oh well how how did they travel light speed we can't do that we our our science says we can't do okay our oh, shit, we is, can't do it because yeah. we're fucking we're we are limited. Yes, we are limited. And then yes. uh you know, so-called smart idiots say that they can't do it. Well, why why? Because yes. we can't. No, because we project onto right. other it's sort of like the whole argument. And I this is why I agree with you. I think it would be more I'm not saying they necessarily would be totally benign the way Spielberg, you know, made ET. All right, but I I do think that that close encounters reason why I buy that more than I buy the independence day approach is because I feel like independence day is us projecting human nature onto another being that yeah. we like, I, that's why the arrival, by the way, I just want to make sure we're clear. You're talking about the Amy uh, Adams arrival, not the Charlie Sheen. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm talking about okay. what to clarify <laughs> for the purposes, but I agree with that that movie is amazing to me because I felt like, yes, this this is because, and that's the other thing, like the whole concept of, you know, I don't want to get super woo woo here about like consciousness and everything else, but this idea that they've been here the whole time, 
And maybe it just comes down to a perception thing that we can't, we, we haven't been able, and maybe now we are, or maybe they have come from a distance that we are incapable of traveling due to our limits, but our limits are more between our ears than anywhere else. If that makes sense. I, I was going to, I think you, I think you guys both hit the nail on the head with the, the arrogance of the, the human race to think that, that we're the best and the brightest in the, in the galaxy. I mean, if you look at manned flight, which is only, I mean, what are we at now, boys? A hundred, let's call it 120 years old. 120 right? When was, yeah. when was 1902? Right. So I, I'm Somewhere rounding up. 1900 so. something, I believe. Yeah. It's the right brother. So we'll call it right. 120 years. Look what we've done in 120 years. I mean, we'll, we'll pat ourselves on the back as a, as a race. We went from the Wright brothers to 50 years, give or take 60 years later, putting fucking man on the moon to supersonic speeds to, uh, I mean, Jesus, just stealth, stealth I bombers. Mean, and yeah, it, it, exactly. Look how far we've come in 120 years. Now, the big assumption here, the big grain of salt is that we aren't alone in the universe. So let's just, for the sake of argument, though, say that there's other intelligent life out there, not of this, this planet that maybe have a little more of a head start in terms of evolution than, than we've got. What makes you think that they haven't developed the the, the technology, the, yeah. the, the stealth and and the, the, the ability to, to speeds and and that's the thing, like you know, you're talking about the, the evidence. If you if you don't discredit science, and that's I'm a big believer in number one, I think we have a responsibility to study things and to try to debunk things. Because you know, you talk about the cave things and the chariots in the sky. Were some of those uh meteors probably? I mean, I told you, I went the 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 Starlink thing. If if that were thousands of years ago, I'd have sworn on a stack of well, yeah, because stone if, you, tablets. if you saw if you saw the Starlink thing, <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying though. Like ago. my first reaction is that well, that's can't be that can't be man made. You know what I mean? Even though obviously it is. But um, what I was going to say is, you know, we were specifically talking about the 2004 uh, video footage, the yeah. um, uh, the Nimitz thing. And I, I I was just watching something recently, and the guy was saying, "Listen, you know, we put that through the ringer. Our grain of salt here, but our government scientists did the math and said that that particular craft would have had to have been going in excess. I think he said twenty four thousand miles per hour. Mm -hmm. The G forces alone, there's not an element, and certainly not a human pilot that could withstand." physically that kind of so so. If you assume that it it was going that speed and it was physical there's no way that that was was of the planet earth because we simply don't have yeah and there's no Those way are, a so, human I being mean, was in it because you uh you'd have been like you've been like turned into a friggin pudding you would have if, been if, if, yeah. yes if that i mean just ionize but but you know what i mean so i mean that's there's obviously there's a leap of faith that if you're gonna you know the only explanation then is that it's not of this this planet and for some people that's too much to, to or to what about this one or this dimension now where are we at with the it could be something not necessarily because we think very linear right we're very like oh it's a planet we have to go from a to b and not coming through something else that we don't even it's like we're just like these hairless chimps trying to figure out <laughs> what the what we're even talking about but that's one of the arguments that this isn't even just interplanetary it's interdimensional mm -hmm. I buy that too. Maybe. I mean, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I buy that. Honestly, I buy, if I'm being honest, I buy that before you'll convince me that like Lockheed Martin or Atheon thought up what these guys reported seeing and were able to make that happen without anybody knowing it. Now, now I know the argument people go to, what about the stealth bomber? Nobody knew about that. People saw that, thought it was a UFO. Yeah. But once it came out, it totally made sense. No one said, oh my God. That is defying everything we've ever understood about the universe and physics. And it's, you know, it's like, oh, it's cool. It's badass. It's futuristic, you know. But at the end of the day, it, it was reasonable. What these guys reported seeing and experiencing in these videos that have been shown, it's not reasonable yeah. by any yes, metric. Yes, it defies the laws of yes, physics totally. as human beings know it. Totally. Yeah. But I think you know, as far uh, as as other uh, now, if we if we step off of a flying object for a second, we're just talking about other intelligence, alien intelligence. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, this idea that they've always been here, you know, I absolutely buy into that because I'm a huge believer in cryptids of all shapes and sizes from Bigfoot to Florida skunk apes to what the hell do you have up in, in New York, Chris? What's the big cryptid for Northern New York? The Jersey you devil. You guys have a signature. <laughs> the Jer- yeah. I mean, the, you have a signature cryptid. Big, I, mean, we've I, got, Bigfoot, I feel like big, Sasquatch, well, big Sasquatch. I think. Oh yeah. He's got it. Yeah. But I feel like he's for, we get it. Get, they've had, they've had, I mean, we have technically a Bigfoot type species here in florida the the skunk okay. ape yeah the, the another one my dad, anyway my dad is, well, hold on, real quick my dad the geologist absolutely 100 percent convinced about that one too because he, he had stories from like because he grew did up it in exist the, that yeah because he grew up he was born yeah. in 43 so he grew up in florida in the 50s pre-air conditioning when you'd like he was like an eight-year-old walking around with like a 22 rifle over his shoulder yeah. so he didn't get killed by a rattlesnake through an orange grove kind of guy how many mar- how, specifically how many marine species are discovered every freaking year and again it just goes back to the arrogance that we think we've got all the answers and we've discovered everything there's there's so i fully believe that there's stuff out there that exists that we have no no scientific information on and i think some of those could be mistaken for alien life forms because in our minds it is it is alien in nature to you know uh, in the sense that it's not what we're what we're used to you know it doesn't necessarily mean that it comes from but at the same time again it goes back to evolution and if 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 time travel and uh, um if uh, speed of light travel is capable for other parts of the the universe then absolutely i think they can well, get or, and and here's a key that, but see that's the a point that, right we, we assume it's speed of light but there's a whole issue of like wormholes and bending time and space. Interdimension, there's, there's exactly, te- exactly. There's techno- exactly. technological things that we can't even conceive of that could be. And I'm just, and ultimately my attitude is I'm, I'm just wanting to play sort of that devil's advocate of, but wait a minute, you know what, you know, we say, we say it could be, you know, we have to do this. Mm-hmm. We have to be able to everything based on what humans can do so far or think. Yeah, theoretically, I, just, I think we're, theoretically could we're be. a young species in the, the big yeah. scope of things. And we're a young planet. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think to, to, to think that there's not somebody or something else out there that's more advanced than we are, that's mastered yeah. this this art of interdimensional, intertime, interplanetary travel and stealth capabilities. I just think that's it's almost dangerously arrogant. Well, so Rick makes a point. The idea of aliens terrify me on this level. Any species that has created technology to come here is susceptible to the need to conquer and destroy. I, and then he and then he follows it up with, uh, I would love them to be like E.T., but knowing our luck, it will be like aliens, LOL. Well, first off, to be fair, we went to the aliens. They didn't come to us. That's one. Two, I would argue the, that concept of conquer and destroy, if you go from that perspective of an evolutionary development, especially on a conscious level, I wonder how, because think about like how barbaric, more primitive, you're not saying we are barbaric now. We have our moments for sure. But some of us at least try (laughs) on occasion to hold back uh, on some of our maybe more innate tendencies. So what I'm getting at is I feel like my, and maybe this is purely a personal opinion thing, that the further along you go, the less you even need to do that. It wouldn't even, I don't even know. Right. Like first, uh, here's a good example. And this is the part, honestly, this is 100% cope on my part of wanting them to be this benign force that will save us from ourselves so the stories and i'm sure you guys have heard these outside of like nuclear facilities nuclear missile facilities that they just shut it down and they just sit there for an hour and then shut it on and then leave like the message is hey dumbasses yeah don't blow don't fuck it up (laughs) right and i and that's me reading into it i get that but like that's what i'm hoping i'm hoping they're gonna be like these stupid hairless chimps, whether, whether, you know, however their connection to us from the past, whatever, that there's something like they're maybe trying to save us from ourselves. Go ahead, Chris. You kind of just described the entire plot of the abyss, by the way. Okay, go ahead, Chris. That's true. I did. Yes. (laughs) I mean, I, you know, I believe that 100%. I have never bought into the idea of, uh, you know, planet domination. Um, And that's because, I don't think <laughs> I don't think we're that special. I really don't. Yeah. I was going to say it's back to that arrogance thing, right? I we're also, the center of the universe. Maybe they don't give a shit. That's the thing. Like, oh man, 
I really upset people when I say what I'm about to say. It's your opinion, man. Go ahead. But it's but it's because I think they don't want to rationally think about it. Um, So I am very much of the like. um, We are we are weird fucking creatures on a giant rock that is floating in nothing. Everyone wants to get to space, but we are in space. Mm -hmm. We are these things that gave ourselves these names as human. Everything that we know, we made up. Our science can only go so far. Our brains can only go so far. We literally do not know what the fuck we are. Mm -hmm. We don't know what these other creatures are on this floating thing um this is only our brains coming up with this stuff Mm -hmm. do you know what i mean like yes yeah um i really don't the the universe is so fucking vast you know what it is here's the thing regardless of whether i don't think if i don't think world domination is a fucking is even in the cards for you know, and, who knows? And, and i would argue and maybe it's not that we're just especially and again that's a human co- like concept maybe it's so much about being special but it's about whatever the, and this is again total speculation on my part but maybe it's more about guidance like they're like the, we're in, in this nascent space of where a lot of species get to and with proper guidance it could continue on upward. I guess what I'm saying is like, I tend to be of the philosophy. Um, and, and that's the other thing is I do. I think, I don't know if you watch the show lost. I make the argument. If you remove the last season of lost, it could have been perfect. It should have just ended with it at, at the end of season five. That's a personal thing, but I loved it mainly because I love the discussion, like sort of the, the man of philosophy versus the, the man of science aspect between like Locke and Jack. And I definitely was more of a lock a hundred percent. I'm team lock. I'm a, I I I find philosophy in a lot of ways, way more interesting uh, than, than sort of like hard science. My dad was a hard science guy, despite all his other stuff he was into. Uh, but I, I always, and he and I would get like these occasional, it seems like the only time we ever got any kind of arguments is that I tried to pose the why, like one time we started talking about the big bang and I, and I just purely was doing a thought experiment. I was like, okay, but what came like, what trigger, like you're it's arguing a cause and effect. What was the, the, the sort of the, the cause and then he was he was trying to, but I was coming at it from more of a philosophical <laughs> point of view. He was uh, very annoyed with me for that that car ride. I seem to remember. But all of that being said, I guess where I'm going with this is, and this is where my take on I I I, I loathe to use the word God, but the idea of a universal for whatever you want to call it. Okay, put a name on it. Again, that's us. That's a human thing. Got to put a name on it. I feel like we so can't wrap our brains around the shit we got to get done by the end of the week. Why is it we think we could possibly begin to under, truly understand reality? Like what's, like, you know what I mean? If that makes it like what's really going on. Like we have this perception of reality, but in actuality, we're just a bunch of molecules and at, just, mm. we're just moving. We're just, you know, we're mostly water. If we're going to you know take it to, to a liquid level, <laughs> you know, we're not. But yet, I feel like I'm Joel, and you're Chris, and he's Dyson. And, but what, what does that mean? Like, what does that even mean that we, we've, like you said, we've put a name on it, and we've got the, 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 the ego that believes it's a thing. But that's all that's afraid. Of. Like, for instance, of dying. Like, I mean, we get really woo-woo here. But, like, the concept of dying. It's like, what's afraid of dying is the ego. That's what's afraid of dying. The construct that I've created of who I am throughout my whole life doesn't want to die. I built all this. Ah, I don't want to lose it all. Right. But that's, there's something else going on there. And anyway, all that to say, if we can't even have like a true understanding of any of that stuff, what makes us think we could understand what, what these are, what their motivations are. Cause that's the other thing we're trying to, even us, like I think Chris and I, you and I are saying, but we want to ascribe more benign, benevolent motivation, but it's still motivation. What if even the, the idea of motivation isn't correct? Does that make sense? Like maybe it isn't. I mean, who cares? I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm so like, uh, you know, there's parts of me <laughs> and this is morbid. 
<laughs> but there's parts of me that's just like, man, I'm okay with a giant fucking rock coming to fucking take us out. Only to watch the faces of the people who think they're special. <laughs> you know, just so I can sit and laugh. So what you're saying is the Joker inside of you. <laughs> uh, like, I, I, I just, they, uh, I, I really find us repugnant. I, I, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just think we're so arrogant and and unwarranted. Yeah. Unwarranted we're, we are arrogant uh, to a fault. And, and it just. It boggles my mind. Yeah. And, you know, and I'll talk about this stuff with my friends and they hate it. They're just like, they don't even want to think about it. They don't like the idea that we are in the middle of nothing. They just, they can't stand it. You know yeah, what I mean? It's, they, it's a freaky idea if you really think about it deeply. Oh, yeah. Man, I love it. I, yeah. I fucking love it. I embrace it. I'm like, you know, uh, we want to get to space. But dudes, we're in space. Yeah. We're in fucking space. Man. Well, how about, how about breaking down for people who like, you know, science and whatnot, uh, statistically, that the, the statistical probability of any one of us being here right now having this conversation and every possible thing that's had to occur in order to make that happen. And I know that's a very fatalistic way of viewing things, but at the same time, there's something to that. I feel, I feel that there's something to that idea that the probability of you existing is like one in, and I, a number far bigger than my limited math knowledge <laughs> could probably describe. It's insane. The chances now real quick, Rick said, uh, and I think it's referring to about the benevolence and guidance of the, the aliens, if that is what they are. Uh, if that was the case, when are they going to help guide us? They've had decades. And if they are within uh, our race, hu uh, human form, helping to influence, they aren't pushing our species into a better way. Now, I would counter, Rick, with that's because because when you're in the middle of things that they seem like they're at their worst, you don't have the hindsight yet to realize all the shit that a good example of this would be how many times during the cold war we came to complete nuclear annihilation and not the Bay of pigs. Like there were a few key moments. I had a friend that worked in the air force in the eighties who told me a story about, I think it was, I don't know if it's an SR 71 SR 71 Blackbird. That's the plane, right? Tyson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I can't remember if it was that one, but it was basically a spy plane crash landed Soviets were involved, blah, 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 came that close. And like, there've been multiple times. Now I'm not saying that aliens prevented that from happening. That's what I'm trying to, but I'm just saying we don't know until after the fact, how close we came to shit may seem bad now, but it could always be worse. That is my take on it. So I, I don't know if that remotely gives you any, uh, any, any pause, Rick, <laughs> for your point, but uh, that's my take on it. I think that, for all we know, they are guiding us. And maybe part yes. of the process is well, things have to suck sometimes. Here's another thing. Uh, <laughs> America thinks they are the world. No. There's a giant <laughs> fucking planet out there of billions of people that we have no control over, like it or not. America. Not yet. Not you yet, know? Chris. <laughs> um, we don't know shit. A McDonald's really in every neighborhood, Chris. Uh, we don't know it. what's been where, you know, who's been where. Uh, we, Unfortunately, America, we just can't control that. Yeah. As much as you think you can. Yeah. Uh, and that's another thing where I think hubris comes into it. As far as like, I always, I, uh, it bugs me like when, when the government or people in that area say, well, we have to. We have to control disclosure. Why? Yeah. If it's going to happen, it's going to fucking happen with or without you. You know what I mean? Like, you have no control over it whatsoever. You can control what you know and what you want to get out to the public. But if a fucking giant ship comes over <laughs> yeah. and does whatever it does, fuck you, America. You know what I mean? Fuck yeah. you, the world. Like, Fuck you, humans. Like, yeah. uh, you know, that that's another moment where I just I want this chaotic disclosure. Oh, I want to see I want to see people running in the streets. I want to see fucking people offing themselves. I do because <laughs> because I hate us. I really do. Well, see, I, hate us. I, I will say this. I am not a, a, a misanthrope. 
<laughs> I do. I do not hate humanity. Uh, oh. I actually, I, I see, I, I get, don't get me wrong. I get that compulsion. I've had it myself. Um, but I, I think I tend to think of it on a more of like a smaller scale which when just sort of like specific, maybe a little like elite groups of people are being super arrogant about shit that I kind of want like, yeah, let's see you like eat crow, but eating crow is not like, you know, dying in mass. <laughs> so um, I personally think I have hope. Okay. Here's the thing. I have hope for humanity. I have that sort of Joker. Let's let it all burn kind of tendency as well, but I do have hope. I think, there are moments where humanity and human beings have shown goodness and have have been good. But there's good people. Yes. But so what? <laughs> At the end of the day, we're all going in the same place. Do you know what I mean? Like <laughs> there's always gonna be good people and there's always gonna be hideous, repugnant fucking people. Yeah, that but that's uh, yeah, I think but I think the key is is that what you accept that is just reality. You know, don't resist it. <laughs> I it, know, it, it. But, but so, but I, so, but good or bad, I think we need a slap in the face like that. I really do. I, I think we need something to happen that is so catastrophic to say, man, maybe we aren't shit, you know, uh, because maybe that would turn fucking people around. We, you basically, what you're arguing is uh, 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 we need like a humbling moment oh my goodness we need it yeah oh, my yeah we need to be we need i i concur i don't necessarily know that we need to be like eliminated <laughs> but i do think we need to be humbled huh. maybe some of us <laughs> <laughs> i feel like i feel like some level of humility would be we'd be good tyson um uh i feel like uh you've gotten uh, quiet on me here have you Ma a, no it's just because impression no i'm so no, honestly, you know what? I, I have slipped into this. It's it. That's why I love this conversation, guys, because, I mean, I'm 100 percent no bullshit like thinking about things. You know what I mean? That's I'm on this roller coaster where. <laughs> no, I know. But I mean, like, I, I, I mean, like really thinking like we're not just yeah. bullshitting about goofy alien movies and stuff we, we, we've seen. But I mean, no, I mean, you guys, you, you, you bring up good points. And it's it's I keep going back to this idea that you know, on the, the big intergalactic scale, you know, are we just, are we just a, it's something in a Petri dish that a, that a higher intelligence is, is, you know, that's the thing too. Like maybe that to, again, to think that we're so important that the only reason we've got UFOs and aliens and whatnots are, are because they're trying to conquer us and take over again. Maybe they just are fucking bored and they just want to see what happens. You know what I mean? They're just checking us out. We're just a we're just a product on a shelf on a universe of convenience just, store. You yeah. know what I mean? They're just checking. Like I think we're like, one of many. To think that, yeah, no, yeah. I really, I, I, I see. I, one of many does not equal not. I try to think of the right word, but I was gonna. My knee jerk response was to say not worth worth something or valuable, but one of many does not necessarily equal not having some sort of purpose or value. Does that make sense? That's how I take. No, it. I think that. I guess I would put it as as um, you know, you can accept that there's a reason we're here, but I don't think we've reached the the level of understanding to to that we can grasp what that reason it is. Does well, that well make maybe sense? yes, but maybe Rick can help us. Uh, he's using a quote here: "You are a strange species, not like any other, and you'd be surprised how many there are. Intelligent but savage." Should I tell you what I find beautiful about you? You are at your very best when things are at their worst. Starman. I can't believe I forgot to mention Starman. Damn it. Thank you, Rick. I like Starman. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care who knows it. I like Starman. Karen Allen at her most Karen allen -y -est. Are you a, Are you a Starman person, Chris? It's all right. It's not my favorite job. I've character. seen it. I I've seen it once. The show, though. I, I liked the show. Oh, the old TV show. It was, it was one season, right? Was it? Yeah, one Robert yeah. Hayes. Yeah, yeah that's right. That that's right. That's right. I remember it. So, so uh, input, input, hit, hit, hit us, Chris. I see. I like conversations where not everybody's on a hundred percent the same page, and but we're, you know, I think it's cool. I uh, listen. I love life. I love where I am right now. I love uh, the dumb shit that I love and I like laughing and 
having a good time and all that stuff. But I also, as you see, I also don't think we're we're much of anything. Like I, um, it all fascinates me so much. Uh, you know, I will stay up at night. I can't sleep, and sometimes it's because I just think like, man, how fucking cool is this? Like, <laughs> you know, I'll think about like, what the fuck are we? You know, uh, you know, because I because we're not humans. I don't know what we are. You know, and that is fascinating and exciting. And and to think that there are other giant floating rocks out there with other life on it. And what does that life look like? And how cool would that be to see that? life? And mm -hmm. it's so fascinating and fun to me. Um, I'm not scared at, by it at all. Um, and that's probably because like, you know, growing up, I just, I always, I didn't have that thought that we were anything more than w creatures. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's actually, that's a, good, no, that's a valid point. I, you know, I sometimes wonder... I'll look at my fucking cat, you know, and I'll just go, what the fuck are you dude? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you most know? cat owners, most cat owners have that experience. <laughs> But you know what I mean. Like, yeah, I know what you mean. Any I know animal, what you mean. and just yes. like, what are you? Yeah, look at <laughs> the pl look at the platypus for God's sake. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that that though you touched on something just there that's interesting, which is I feel like by you, like you said, you didn't grow up with a certain view of it being anything other than you're, you know, you're you're part of this species whatever it is and you're and and, you're, and, and i think that perhaps it, it is like the it's almost the idea and you know i have friends that are of all various on the uh, on the faith spectrum they run the whole gamut right and it's interesting to me how people on the most extreme edges of that are often have the most anxiety for instance about death right okay. it, it, and so it's the it's it's always the sort of the extremes of anything and I wonder to what degree I feel like there's something with that idea of our specialness. And again, that's just a made up thing that humans made up that may. And, 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 and honestly, as just forget, forget aliens and all that other stuff, human societies, individual people weren't that special up until recently. That's a relatively modern yeah. phenomenon mm -hmm. the idea of the individual being above all else i mean when you look back like to die during you know whatever the crusades or whatever the hell we, you know just go back a few hundred years to die for like a cause like that was so important right that <laughs> that that as opposed to getting to live your best life to your 85 no one back then thought that way because no one lived to be 85 for the most part uh but i think that idea even of the sort of us as individuals is very like, th like the idea that we're not all interconnected, not even just to each other, but to everything, yeah. like to everything, we're all connected. And it's like, when you start thinking of it like that, it also starts changing the calculus on how you treat other animals and people and everything else. It, it just kind of, it just kind of hit me, Joel, you were, you were talking about this and, and um, this goes back to, something i watched recently about the whole 2004 ufo sighting thing and one of the common things they were talking about that we didn't really bring up was after these people have these encounters and the nightmares that they have about mm -hmm. armageddon and cataclysm and and it's almost like if there is you know something out there the effect it has on is it is it makes you realize how uh fragile meaningless well, it's, it's, exactly. I don't know. Like, it's meaning. Like that's the, that's meaning a side is, effect of being in contact with a higher being is you 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 realize yeah. like how meaningless our day to day you know, it's, it's a reality is. 100%, check. Hundred percent, hundred percent, agree with that. I don't know. I believe there's something great, a greater meaning, but I don't, I'm saying I don't know that we can even comprehend what that greater meaning is. The things that we think yeah. mean something, I'm a hundred percent on board with that. They don't mean shit. That other than well, what we've attributed, and that's what I, mean. I think maybe the folks that have these nightmares and these it, it's because again, as humans, we don't have the capacity to process, you know, the glimpses that, that, that these people that have had encounters and, 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 um, 
uh, abductions or abductees or whatever that, that, that just it's it's beyond mm-hmm. where we're at as a species to, to comprehend and that's just a natural side effect is your brain just immediately goes to to these bizarre thoughts of cataclysm and end of the world type type events or maybe they're showing it to you to put in perspective how fragile it all is that could Um, be too so rick makes a point cabs cats are observational devices planted by our unseen alien overlords that is what i'm voting for rick hey there there's a reason that jonesy is the only damn character that survives the franchise that's true oh my god you're right he did jonesy did he did um (laughs) so uh before we uh we wrap this up. We got a little time left, and you're doing good on time, right, Chris? Oh yeah, you good. Okay, just making sure. And you always give it. You always do that. Like, come on, man. I, what I, is I, I, what is time anyway? Exactly. Right. Right. Let's get into that now. Let's get I into that. I did write that down. I did. Uh, yeah, that that'll be the next topic. <laughs> All right. So you said you had a couple of things happen. Yeah. So you've had some some evidentiary, uh, some some experiential evidence, I should say. Uh, so what what were those uh, things that happened? So um, one was probably I want to say like eighty six, um, and our neighborhood <clears throat> during the summers we you know we had a tight neighborhood. All the kids played with every all the kids you know all the parents knew everybody. Everyone would go out. Uh, and had like bonfires and stuff like that and it just it just was a fun community and so you know summer of 86 we were all playing out in this um, big field that sort of connected all like three or four houses Um, and then behind that field was a huge patch of like wooded area Um, and so this is probably dusk I'm just getting dark and fireflies are out and, you know, all of us kids are just running around catching fireflies and shit. And, uh, one of the, one of the parents yells like, what the hell is that? Right. And there starts to be commotion among everybody and people are getting out of their like lawn chairs and stuff like that. And, um, up in the wooded area, so there's giant like pine trees right um in the wooded area so i would say in the middle of those giant pine trees behind the pine trees um there was this like crazy just weird colored lights like shooting out in the like in the air in the middle of like these giant pine trees right and it's slowly just going along and these colored lights are just shooting out of the pine trees and of course us stupid kids we like we're like what and we run up towards the woods you know and and the parents are like come on you know get back here blah 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 so they're running up there too um but by the time that we were even, you know, yeah, uh, we were close to the where the, the woods began. Um, the light just like went like, just like connected and then and it was gone. Just gone. And <laughs> like everyone was like, that was a fucking UFO. You know, like the whole neighborhood was just like oh my god you know like what was that blah 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 blah. um so much so that the next like that week there were like reports in the wellsville daily reporter of you know a ufo like these lights that people were seeing and blah 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 so that was one thing i was like nine um and then 1990 13 uh again it's the summer and me and some friends in my backyard set up a tent and you know we took a little tv out there in the vcr and stuff like that and and it's probably like one o'clock in the morning um and we're watching horror movies and whatever the fuck 
and I go out to, to pee. And so this is the one that actually like sends like shivers up my spine. Because I still don't quite know what the hell it was. But so um I'm peeing, doing my thing. And then if you look to the left of me, uh my great grandmother's house, it was to the left, and then right beside her house was this small creek. And on the other side of the creek, it led up to the woods. Um, and so I'm peeing and I look to my left and there is this, the way I've described it is like, because to me it felt like it was a figure, but the figure was wearing all white the face was all white, but I described it as somebody wearing giant sunglasses because all I saw was two giant, God. to me, sunglasses, you know what I mean? Like, but, but I didn't see like a big head. I didn't see anything like that, but it almost to my brain at 13 looked like some pale dude wearing a white suit. You know what I mean? Like, because it was just all white. And so I couldn't even think about like, oh, this is just a white human. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and I flipped the fuck out. So I run into the tent and I'm like, we're going upstairs. Like, get, come on. We are running upstairs. <laughs> and they're like, what? And so as we're running, uh, I can hear my buddy Jeff go, what's that? You know, and we're just running. I'm like, run, run. And so we run up into my bedroom and my bedroom was at the top floor and my window looked out so that you could see the backyard and you could see that area. And when we got out up there to look out the window, there was, it was gone. There was nothing there. Um, didn't sleep the rest of the night, yeah, <laughs> you know, like uh, we were, you know, we told everybody, and they were just like, oh, it was probably somebody just fucking with you, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, as I got older and I was thinking about it, the, the white suit went away. The dark sunglasses went away. And I was thinking, okay, did I see what people typically see? You know what I mean? Did I see, like, a gray or whatever? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and I'll never, I've never been able to forget it. Uh, sometimes is that a I, I'll have nightmares about it, you know, like <laughs> yeah. Chris, is that immediately where your, your mind went when you saw it? Was it, it was a, uh, again, a non-terrestrial intelligence. So, or did, again, at like, 13, my mind went to, Oh, it's some pale dude in a white suit, which is okay. freaky by itself, by the way, uh, wearing dark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Either way. But, dark okay. your sunglasses. Yeah. Yeah. I, it was a, I saw it, didn't want to see it ran right to the tent and ran the fuck. I didn't even want to look again over there. You know what I it's, mean? It speaks to your character though, that you didn't just bail on your friends. <laughs> no, I was like, we got to get in. Yeah. Uh, and the yeah. fact that Jeff was like, what is that? I was like, it. oh fuck. He saw it. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? like, yeah. That, that makes it worse somehow <laughs> when it's confirmed by another person. It's yeah. validated. Yeah. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Well, so my, my story is going to be really weak by comparison. <laughs> I should have saved yours for the end. Those are my two. Like weaker than weaker than Starlink? <laughs> uh, probably in between. Because and to be fair, it's okay. not even my story. So, and I'm purely going on memory from my uh, my uncle uh, what he told us. So, I think they were right driving down a back road somewhere in Florida, and I want to say it was up near Gainesville because my uncle had had polio in the fifties. To like literally, it was like in one of those like aqua lungs for a, like you know like in a hospital for a year. He one of his arms was like this big around, and we called him Robo Glenn because I swear to God that the guy had more gear in his body than any human being. Yeah, he had like a titanium, you know, a, al a titanium alloy. <laughs> or it was crazy. Like the, look at the alloy. Yeah, he had like yeah. 28 major operations at Shands Hospital in Gainesville, which anybody knows it's a like major uh, university hospital. And I say major operation, I mean, I've done like six, eight hours plus type of operations. She always went back and forth. So I guess, and they would, they got, he didn't always want to ride on the interstate and stuff. So they would take these back roads at one time. They're in the middle of nowhere. 
and he just described it as a like uh, he called it at the top like a cigar. He said it was and it was bigger than their car, but it wasn't like huge, but a little, like a like a he's compared to like a small bus maybe. And he said it was about the size of a cigar, and it was like maybe a hundred feet, if that, above their car. Like it was, and it was completely silent, and it was just like tracking along with them, and then gone. And it, so I don't know they, they, if that's what helped feed my dad's interest because my uncle mm-hmm. was the kind of guy like he was very sort of like, he he had a he had a sense of humor, but he was very sober minded. Like he didn't. You know, what I mean? he's not like the kind of guy to be like, "Hey, kid, I want to mess with it." No, he never. I don't can't think of a single time he pulled like a prank or a. Yeah, you know I mean? so coming from him, it, it had it held a lot of weight, and he was he didn't even like over embellish it. He didn't hi, no hyperbole. Like, oh, we were terrified. No, so yeah, we're just driving along, and I see like a light. I kind of looked up under the you know the the because I you know it was like I think it was like their I don't know it was like some Buick Skylark or something, and he was like just kind of stuck his head rolled down the window. Stuck his head out and just said he saw the cigar, totally silent, glowing, and then it was just gone. And, you know, that's one of the first things I noticed when I moved down here, Joel, 15 years ago, whatever, is I didn't realize how UFOE Florida is. Like, well, it is dude, Florida. there's some roads <laughs> still. Dude, I'm saying there's some roads in this state, though, that, like, you want to talk about, like, oh, yeah. rural ass. It's very, it's very like a close forest. encounter. We- and they're chasing the lights. I mean, minus the, minus the mountains and the hill part, but it's, it's got that sort of, or like, uh, what was it? Mm-hmm. Um, invaders from Mars, you know, that, that sort of like with the fence and the, like, it's very, yeah, there's a lot of that. But everyone thinks Florida, they think of Disney or they think Florida man or they think whatever, but there are some tourists sure, and beaches. And, and, yeah, yeah that's Matt, what's very, that stretch of road between like Polk City and 33? Uh, no, 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 no. That's north and south. This is like at the 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 circle there. And I know Chris is like, I have no idea what the fuck this guy's talking about. <laughs> but, uh, Polk City, and then it goes east and west to like, uh, um, 98 maybe. Of anyway, but I've driven that stretch at night before, and I'm like, this is this is it. This is yeah. where if I'm gonna get abducted, yeah, if you're getting probe, nabbed. That's where you're getting nabbed. Yeah. On this, I think I talked about this the last time with Chris when we were on this call. That's because I, I like it's nothing has ever happened to me on that road, and I could get chills just thinking about yeah, driving creepy. on that road at night it's because creepy. I know you've got cows, and I yeah. know there's had to have been cattle mutilations. I mean, knows about. It's got one of like the two train track crossings in the state of Florida that I, I, I'm convinced. So I'm I know that one of these nights I'm gonna get stopped by a train and I'm going to see something in the, you know, all, all close encounter ish. It's like, yeah. I mean, if, dude, if we're going to make an alien movie in Florida, then we got to do it on that road. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Uh, but real quick, Peter, Peter's here. He said, good day to you. Fine gentlemen. He's, he's uh, calling it from Sweden. Thank you, Peter. It was like two in the morning or something. Uh, he's about, look, see, he just had daylight say whatever. So he's either five hours Ahead of me are six. You know, it fluctuates, and he hates the fact that I can never keep it straight. I don't know. Um, so, actually, Chris, I don't know if Peter's the guy that's on uh, Retro Movie Geek with me that we did uh, Running Man. So, uh, yeah. So, um, anyway, so any other uh, UFO oriented thoughts, opinions, feelings uh, <laughs> before we start to button this one up? I believe. Yeah. You know? Yes. I feel like I, I very much want to believe. And I lean towards belief. I just also acknowledge I don't know. Like, I don't know what I don't know. And I don't know mm-hmm. what's going on or what it is other than I feel like the only thing I feel confident is that if it's us, if it's if it's all human based, all of it, then we're already being mind controlled to such a degree to where all of that could go on. And we had no idea that it's like, why even bother fighting anymore? <laughs> Look, and here's the thing. Like, people always say, oh, it's military this and military that. Look, I spent seven years in the military. And it's like, you guys must have been around a lot smarter motherfuckers than I work with. Because let me tell you something. That, no mili- way they're pulling this Wait, shit off and, and nobody line, knows. About- <laughs> Tyson, is it the line, military intelligence is the ultimate oxymoron? Absolutely. <laughs> it's like, are you shitting me? No way. Have we figured that? And nobody's, and, and they, everybody's kept a, a, a lid on it. So it's no 1041. Way. Peter yelled at me and said, I'm six hours ahead oh, okay. of you. Yes. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> it's not that late. He's fine. It's late for me, but not for him. All right. Well, Mr. Seaver, uh, thank you for doing this, for uh, en- enduring the, I, I, I just saw your, uh, your alien spy running up the stairs behind you. One um, 
Uh, so, of course, Wellsville Knights. Everyone should uh, check that out, support yeah. it, and uh, it's 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 you guys are. I, I kicked have, a little bit in the kitty finally. Yeah, you Just better have. That, that you better here. have. Yes, I appreciate. It. So, uh, of course. So, uh, yeah. Oh, also, when we get we get off of this, I uh, also need to ask you about a couple of other uh, titles that I want to pick up from you. Sure. So, for for. Uh, for my my collection, I'm 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 gonna. I feel like I want to have like the complete Chris Seaver filmography. The cri- the Criterion collection. Well, I, I don't. I wouldn't go that far, but I definitely want to have the the complete library as much as I can get. I know I know some things are no longer available, but uh, but yeah. So anyway, cool. Wellsville Knights absolutely should check that out if you haven't already. Uh, it's it's uh, you guys start shooting that in what was it again? The end of July. In July, it was uh, the, very, the tip, the very end of July, going into August. And right cool. now, it looks like we'll be able to shoot two more episodes. All right, um, not what we wanted, but you know, with any luck, we wanted to do at least four more episodes. But the way things are going, uh, the the GoFundMe will stop June first. Um, you know, I, I will consider it a success if we can actually do three more episodes as opposed to just the two, but mm-hmm. Hey, you know, I, I I'll take it. How uh, close are you? If you don't mind me asking, like within the like percentage wise, how close are you to getting to where you need to be to do three? Uh, uh, <laughs> we're, we're a few, a few grand we're, away. Yes, we're a couple grand away. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, in a few months. I mean, a couple months still left. You could, it could happen. Yeah, you know, we're going, we're doing a convention uh, yeah. next week, um, and all that money is going to go towards the the production. So, you know, who knows? Who knows? But um, getting to do two is awesome, and I'm, you know, I'm excited to get back into it and you know, rock and roll. And then after that, we'll we'll do all the features and everything. We'll get to the features and put Wellsville Knights away for a little bit. Um, yep, yep. Because uh, I, I don't want to say anything, but you have other things happening that I know I'm excited about as well. Indeed. And so uh, that, that that'll be fun. And so I hope hopefully we can get you back on here to to talk about uh, weird shit and <laughs> yeah, Anytime. and and and, uh, and UFOs and aliens as well. <laughs> I'm waiting. For, let's. I'm going to do a Bigfoot episode, guys. So. <laughs> So that's where word. Chris draws the line. No, I mean, uh, you know, <laughs> again, like, I, I, who knows what the fuck is out there? Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I, I, I am not a. Anything is on the table because yes. we really don't know. You have an open mind to possibility. Yeah, man. Because like, I think Bigfoot's kind of my spirit animal too, though. That he's just like, fuck. It's all the fucking, hair, dude. You know what it's I mean? Like, such a... <laughs> that exactly and he's just like look i just want to do my own just leave thing, me the hell alone yeah. i just want to be in the woods right. yeah exactly. yeah there's a whole there's a whole walk around um, naked when i want to you know there's a whole thing that there's that the a lot of the extraterrestrials are actually terrestrial and are in the ocean and yes because there's a lot of stuff about the, yeah, that's the a ships, that's a whole other thing yeah with the, the ocean coming out of the ocean and there's video of ships mm-hmm. going into the ocean and, and all yeah. of that stuff and you know, we haven't even scratched the surface of the ocean, uh, sure. and there's constantly odd things that we like to put names to, <laughs> you know, and say, yeah. "Oh, that's a licky lie, but do believe it." And it's like, "Oh, sure, it's okay, that's what it is." <laughs> yeah, that's what uh, it is. Yes, because you, you decided. Know, yeah, but we don't know what the fuck it is. Uh, so uh, I- I'm all open for any of that stuff. Uh, I-, I think, you know, we are there's a whole bunch of weird shit on this rock and um, that's exciting. It's, it's, it's exciting to me. Um, again, anything to push us in the fucking dirt and to say that we're, we're nothing. And there's, there's more out there than just us fucking repugnant creatures. <laughs> I'm all about well, it. Well, all, in that vein and to wrap this up, since I think Peter's about to bail on us here, Peter says there has to be more intelligent life out there because if humanity is it, we're fucking doomed. <laughs> I mean, you know, one would say yeah. we've been doomed. <laughs> Perhaps. I guess, uh, I guess so, w- one of us will be right. <laughs> and yeah, if, if we're doomed, then hey, you know, it is what it is. I mean, we're the, we're the reason 
We are the reason. We're 100 percent the reason. Oh yeah, we'll definitely be our own dude. This planet is a fucking wasteland. Yeah. So uh, Rick says, check out Altered. Uh, if you want Alien Flick from co-direct. Oh, co-director of. Uh, that's right. I remember that from the guy. It was a. Uh, was it Sanchez? Eduardo Sanchez, right? We did mm -hmm. Altered, I think. The Blair Witch Project. Yeah. Yep. So thank you for that. Thank you uh, for the couple people that are left. That that I. At some point, we had a few, and then then they dropped off. We we probably went two down the rabbit hole of weird. I don't know. Whatever. I don't care. It's it's fun to talk about. I know you should have worn that the whole time. That'd have been hilarious. Somebody just randomly coming across the stream. Okay, we should we should we should have we should each we should have each worn one. I don't know. I should have told you guys. I mean, like the guys in uh, just remember uh, the, the nerdy guys in just one of the guys. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. The, <laughs> <laughs> all right well on that note chris thank you again sir for joining us thanks Absolutely, for having me man it was, it was fun it was it was a pleasure uh, always open to talk anything indeed indeed so uh and thank you to one and all who are uh out there in the wild thanks for listening visit retro wrong one <laughs> wrong one i'm just gonna cut it there i'm just gonna quit while i'm ahead and then cut this out all right bye